Hi, hello. <coughs> Come. <laughs> In this video, you are going to show me and you how to, like, five tips how to pop better. I just start talking yes. about the tip. So there's no introduction from you. Uh, this is a tip. <laughs> when you start out uh, with your putting routine, you want to line up straight with the basket. Yeah, we have a little helper here. So He's it's called Johannes. <laughs> you want your hips to be looking straight at the basket. Uh, that way you leave less room for errors. Mm. So if I'm standing that way, I have to uh, be more accurate with my arm. But if I'm facing uh, to the basket with my whole body, it becomes a lot more easier for yeah. me. Do you visualize? <laughs> <laughs> for me, uh, I don't really have to think about it anymore. Mm. Um, I think it's in my body's memory already. But mm. uh, I remember when I started out, I made sure that I was lined up correctly to the basket. And that way it became a lot more easier for me to make my putts. So if we just go through your routine. You well, I'm doing the stra straddle putt. Yeah, you're doing know straddling. Said, have yeah. you always done that? No, not always. Yeah, why did um, you...? Yeah, I made the switch in 2021. Yeah. Um, I had some like serious issues with my putting mm. uh, during World Championships. We just had the Covid break, so to speak. Mm. And I was back at the world stage. And uh, for some reason, putting became a very hard uh, task for me. Yeah. And I can't relate. And for me, it was super hard because when I was uh, moving my body weight from one foot to another, I felt like there was too much movement for me. But I know it was just a mental struggle, but somehow I stuck with the straddle, straddle putt and it has been working for me pretty, pretty, pretty well. Good. The tip remains the same. You want to be lined up to the basket pretty straight, uh, your hips looking toward the basket. You have to make it now. Twice or it's luck. I'm thinking about maybe doing the switch. Okay. Maybe this will tip me over to the your dark side. <laughs> Line, like straight forward. Straight forward, yes. yeah. Twice yeah. or it's luck. Exactly. Professional. Oh my, what is this? We said this prior to recording. It's 80% disc, 20% luck. Yeah. <laughs> The second tip uh, from me would be uh, making sure you give enough spin to the disc and also releasing it on a slightly nose up angle because I feel like that way the disc flies a little bit easier, you don't have to work so hard. But how, question, because the nose up thing, when is it too oh, much, okay. Christine? Um, when is it enough? I don't know, it's a quite uh, personal question or mm. individual. I think there's, if you put a lot of nose up angle. Mm. It could be also good because that way you slow down the disc. Mm. I mean, if it's slightly <coughs> nose up, then it just gives the ability to fly the disc a little bit mm, easier. I know a couple of players who use this tactic in order to uh, putt with spin, but making sure that the disc doesn't fly too far past the basket if mm -hmm. they miss. Oh, that's um, good. But in my opinion, you should not be thinking about missing. It should yeah. not be in your head. So now when we're lined up to the basket, mm -hmm. we make sure we have enough spin and we have the nose up angle. We want to also make sure that we follow through with the putt. Mm. And by that, I mean that uh, when you make your putt, you want to reach out your hand toward the basket, like you want to shake hands with the basket, mm. because that way you're making sure you're giving the disc the correct uh, trajectory. Uh, but if you pull your hand back really quickly, there could be some errors in there. I've also heard that if you, if you do the follow through and you sort of stop, mm -hmm. I made the putt, I don't yeah. even care. <laughs> if you wait, if you have the hand there, so mm -hmm. if you would do a miss, you can mm -hmm. sort of tell where did I go wrong. You want to be super straight. Mm. Uh, so it's not only the hand, but uh, it is the hand. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we talked about your power. I mm -hmm. talked about your power. Where does it come from? It's basically everything I talked about. I think uh, a lot of the power comes from my wrist.
but also putting uh, the wrist action together with the power from the legs. Also practice. I mean, I've, I've practiced for years yeah. and I remember when I started out, uh, it was mind blowing to me how far the guys were able to putt actually. And I was doing my approach shots with drivers from that range uh, and it was <coughs> like 15 meters. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like um, I was this way when I started. Mm. It's, uh, it's something that I have developed. And again, maybe an answer nobody likes to hear, but uh, it's the truth. Oh, I missed. You probably pushed the change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was probably what happened. <laughs> we'll get here. Mm -hmm. Talk about confidence. Exactly. Get it now. <laughs> so, my last tip is building up uh, more confidence, which should come with practice, uh, but it uh, doesn't necessarily mean that because I've seen players practice uh, putting a lot and then go out <laughs> on the greens and just uh, having their confidence uh, absolutely shattered. She's talking about me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem for a lot of players. Um, you could practice a lot and perfect your technique and then still step up to a putt and feel that uh, it might not go in, what if I miss? But all these thoughts you have to erase and only think about uh, making the putt, having the confidence and not really caring about what happens and letting your body take over and just trust uh, the process and trust uh, what you've been doing on the practice field.